More now on this open letter to Ben Bernanke from conservative economists. One name not on the list, Harvard University economist Martin Feldstein. He's a former aide in the Reagan White House. He's also been critical of fiscal and monetary stimulus. He joins us via phone this morning. Uh, Professor Feldstein, you've said QE is not the right remedy, and uh, you think it's going to make the Fed's exit harder. Why didn't you sign this letter? Well, I don't sign letters. Uh, I... Uh, uh uh, just as a matter of, of general practice, uh, you will hardly ever find my name on a letter. <laughs> but do you agree uh, overall with the sentiment uh, as uh, voiced in this open letter that was published today? Yes, I do. Uh, I wrote a piece uh, back on November 3rd in the Financial Times in which I said that I thought that this was the QE2 was a, a risky strategy with very little upside potential. And I think that's what this letter also says. Right. No, I'm looking at that editorial right now. So, I mean, given that you were public in your criticism, uh, why not sign on to the letter? I mean, do you think that it is perhaps politicizing it or the type of, of outright criticism? No, that it's, it's really more a general policy because if I sign on to this letter, then when some other friends come to me a month from now and say, what about this letter? I say, well, I don't like paragraph two, or I don't like <laughs> that sentence. So rather than uh, argue about uh, this word or that word, I just don't. And I have plenty of opportunity, like the Financial Times piece and like this interview, uh, mm -hmm. to say to people uh, what I think about economic issues. So what is your message there? And, and are you concerned about politicization uh, of the Federal Reserve? It's been criticized uh, of, of late. Well, I'm a little concerned that the people who signed this letter uh, appear to be all Republicans. I yeah. think it would have been better if they had uh, made it more bipartisan. But it is just a letter from private economists and some others, mm -hmm. but it's not a letter from the Congress. And so in that sense, it's not politicizing. It's, it is telling the Fed what a group of experts uh, uh, thinks about this. And I think basically what they said in the letter uh, is, uh, is sound. Uh, I think there are real dangers of bubbles being created, something they didn't refer to uh, in the letter. Do you see them being formed, or do you see bubbles now? You do, yes. I think if you look at long-term uh, interest rates, if you look at land prices in the Midwest, if you look at emerging market debt, uh, all of that, I think, uh, runs the risk of uh, excess prices, which could collapse and create serious problems for the economy down the road. Do you think that the uh, Fed should step away from the $600 billion in bond purchases? Should they step away from it either publicly or, or privately? Well, I think it would be a mistake to respond to this letter by saying, oh, gee, we never thought about that. <laughs> so I think that they've left themselves room in their original announcement and in their response to the letter. They've left themselves with room to be able to say, we're looking at the evidence. Right. And uh, we don't have to go the full um, eight months. We can stop along the way or we can cut the, the pace of bond buying in half. Mm -hmm. If they be, Would you advocate they, doing that? Well, I think if they see the kind of evidence that bubbles are building, um, uh, that would certainly be a reason to cut back. They talked a lot about deflation, and as I said in the FT piece, I don't see deflation, and I don't see deflation risk at this point. Mm -hmm. So if, again, that seems to be behind us, further reason for them to be able to say publicly, yeah. um, we're going to scale back on this. And certainly okay. they should diminish the expectation that they may go beyond yeah. the $600 billion, something that's floating around out there in the markets. Well, we'll watch and see. Thank you for your time this morning, Professor.